You're gonna try to lie to yourself tomorrow, but I have bewitched you. I have bewitched you with the truth. If I had not spoken, you'd have had no sin. But I have come, and I have spoken, and now you've got to walk in the light. I warn you, you better not look to anything else. As it's written in Matthew 5, 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You've got to see God in the earth, because what you see, you'll be. When you see him, you will be like him. When he appears, you shall be him. The sky god has everybody worshiping him today, yet the people are going to bed hungry. There's wars, famine, yet you said he had all the power. You said the devil did that. Who made the devil? God made the devil, supposedly. As it says in Isaiah 14, 12, Lucifer was the most beautiful angel, right? I've got to get this in because it's the difference between life and death. I want you to reflect on what I preached today. I want you to testify on what you've seen and heard today. I want you to tell me what you're willing to do for this revelation of God. It's far, far harder to have walked through every day, die slowly, and from the time you're a child to the time you get gray, you're dying. This is a revolutionary suicide. This is not a self-destructive suicide. So they'll pay for this. They brought this upon us, and they'll pay for that. I leave that destiny to them. They set an example for others. 1,000 people who said, we don't like the way the world is. Take some. Take our life from us. We laid it down. We got tired. We didn't commit suicide. We committed an act of revolutionary suicide, protesting the conditions of an inhumane world. Such was the scale of the horror at Jonestown that many cemeteries didn't even want to accept the dead, didn't want to be associated with the tragedy. Here at the Evergreen Cemetery in Oakland, California, 409 victims are buried in a mass grave beneath this hillside. The Military Airlift Command flew its C-141 transports into Jonestown, Guyana with the necessary supplies and equipment to move more than 900 bodies of American citizens to the United States. The task was accomplished in several stages. From before Thanksgiving until several weeks later, Mac was involved in the cleanup operation in Guyana. The bodies were flown to Dover Air Force Base for the task of identification and disposition. Save me, sir. Bring me to the light. When you look in the mirror, what do you see? Do you see the real you? Or what you've been conditioned to believe is you? The two are so very different. One is an infinite consciousness capable of being and creating anything it chooses. The other is an illusion captured by its own perceived and programmed limitations. Everything the people in this nation hold dear is an illusion. In the political arena, you're given the illusion of choice, not realizing that the same hidden hand controls both sides. You're offered food with a promise of nutrition, when in actual fact, it's cheaply produced slop, robbing your body of nutrients. You're taught to laud false gods, celebrities, the rich and powerful. You're told to worship greed, 
to believe that money can buy you happiness. But the 1% control the majority of wealth and everyone else is encouraged to fight for the pitiful scraps remaining. From the cradle to the grave, you don't have choice. You have owners. We dare not step outside of the box because we're ruled by fear. Fearful that if we open our minds and embrace new ideas, people will think we're crazy. When you dismiss a thought process beyond which has been programmed into you from birth, you remain within the false state of consciousness which has been created to keep you under control. They want you to obey, to never discover the true power we all hold within us. Wake up, wake up now, or forever remain imprisoned inside the dream. So tell me about your latest dream. Well, it's nothing we haven't covered before. According to Freud, every dream represents wish fulfillment. What does that mean? Well, I've always believed that dreams are based on repressed desires. But then other psychologists believe that dreams have less to do with our desires and more to do with our worries or preoccupations. It's good for you to talk about your dreams. When the answers can't be found in the waking world, Perhaps they can be found in the subconscious. There's nowhere to hide there. Eager to leave? I'm sorry. I feel like we're going round in circles. It's nothing personal. I know you're doing all you can. It's just all these years later, maybe talking isn't enough anymore. You're right. Talk therapy is just one part of the healing process. It should always be accompanied by physical action in your daily life. I'm trying. Walking, being in nature, things like that are helping. And the medication? I'm not sure I want to take it anymore. Why is that? Because when I take it, I feel nothing. I'm just numb. The objective is to help balance your emotions. I don't know. I feel like a zombie when I take it. I guess I would rather feel something than feel nothing. Well, I would recommend that you continue the medication. For now, at least. But it's up to you. All I can do is advise. Time's up. It's been three years since the accident. I thought my feelings about the church would have changed by now. It all seems so redundant. My mom and dad dedicated their lives to the church and look how God rewarded them. Do you ever think some people are called to God early because their purpose has been fulfilled? That they were here for a specific mission and they completed it. My parents still had a lot of plans. A lot of things they still wanted to do. Then they're taken before they had a chance to do them. It just seems so unfair. Perhaps some people aren't just here on Earth for themselves. What do you mean? Maybe their mission was to help someone else learn. Are you saying they died to teach me a lesson? No, I didn't mean it like that. But think of it this way. Their mission was simply to raise you and set you on your journey. But now for you to truly grow, you have to take the rest of the trip without them. I don't know. What could I possibly learn from losing two people I loved so much? I don't know. I guess that's what you have to find out. I never had a good relationship with my parents. It left me with the core belief that I was unlovable. But that's changed now. I know I'm worthy of love. Have you met somebody? No, I feel <laughs> love at the temple. I finally know what it's like to be part of a family. 
to feel a sense of love and unity. You know, there's a lot of talk about Reverend Jones. Some say he preaches blasphemy. The establishment attack anyone who upsets the natural order of things. You should come to a service. Hear him speak. Make up your own mind. Church is the last thing I need right now. The Reverend speaks about issues no other preacher would dare to. He's not afraid of the truth. Perhaps he has something to say which you need to hear. I believed in America. I bought the American dream. We're told it guarantees equality of opportunity for all, allowing us to pursue our highest aspirations and goals. It says right there on the Statue of Liberty, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. I bought that dream, as I know y'all did too. But equality is not what I see on the streets of America. All I've seen is division. We live in a country where racial segregation and slavery ruled for many a generation. Sadly, that prejudice is alive and well today. Here at the People's Temple, we don't judge people by their color. We judge them by their actions. Now, many have criticized our past. There are those who call us dreamy-eyed socialists. Well, I say we've got to be dreamy-eyed together, or we're going to be blown up together. We've got to live together, or we're going to die together. This is a country that despises our rainbow family. They say we're never going to get to heaven unless we do things their way. But that's the biggest cop out in the world. If you die a devil, then as a tree falls, so shall it lie. If you're a creep here on earth, you'd make a hell out of any heaven you went to. We got to get to doing what Jesus told us to do. Build a heaven here. That's why we have the People's Temple Agricultural Project. Many of our members are out in Guyana right now farming the land and paving the way for our arrival. There we will establish our own heaven, free from prejudice and persecution. We will be self-sufficient. We will be loving. We will enjoy our community without some authoritarian honky telling us what we do in love is wrong. Let me tell you this, brothers and sisters. Our time has come. In Jonestown, we will create paradise, our heaven on earth. We must break free from the bonds of this country because I have seen the truth, and the truth is this. It's called the American dream because you gotta have your goddamn eyes closed to believe it.
from Sarah. Join us. I've made a decision. About what? I'm going back to Jonestown. I feel like I need to see the place again. Well, it's been 10 years. Surely they've built something else on the land by now. It's abandoned. No one's been there since 78. What do you hope to achieve by returning? The memories are so big in my head. Maybe if I see the place as it is now, I don't know, maybe it'll take away some of the power. Maybe I can find some closure. It's possible, but it could also bring back a lot of repressed memories and cause you more distress. I know. I've spent years as a heavily medicated zombie suppressing everything. I feel like it's time to deal with the issues head on. And the medication? see. A decade later and the memories are still so painful. Well, you are my patient. I have a duty of care and it's my judgment that this may not be the best thing for your recovery. But it's up to you. I can only advise. Part of me thinks I'm crazy for even considering this, but I don't know. It's just something I have to do. We are eternal aspects of consciousness, with an infinity of potential. Yet, we have allowed ourselves to become an unquestioning mass of conformity, a herd. Once we concede to the herd mentality, we can easily be controlled by the few, and we are. Not only are we the slaves to their imposed thought, we are also the police force of it ensuring that others conform too. To awaken to the truth, we must first tear down the lies. But we have become too attached to the lies. We want to hold on to the illusion and gain enlightenment while still remaining a part of the three-dimensional rat race. That is not possible. Above all, they feed on our fear. Pain and anguish provides their nutrients. So, what should we put out there instead? How about love? It really is as simple as that. Love for one another, an acknowledgement that we are all one consciousness. That is the true path of resistance. You don't have to fight. You only have to love. Sarah!
Our love will never die. Join us, my love child. We are meant to be together. Always. Gonna have major fallout from this? The media have always been supportive for the most part, but if they smell blood in the water, the pitchforks will come out. Our political friends probably won't support us in the midst of a media witch hunt, not publicly. Anyway, the church is already unpopular with much of the public. Why the hell would we be unpopular, huh? The political influence rubs people up the wrong way. Jealous sons of bitches. 
Bottom line, Jim. If this article causes ripples with registered voters, the politicians who have always given their backing are going to run for cover. So what's the next move? We bring forward our plans. We need to leave for Guyana by the time this article hits the streets. But isn't that a show of weakness on our part? Look, I know we said we're gonna go, but we should be doing it on our time. This looks like we're being pushed out. Lawrence, you just said it yourself. We intend to leave anyway. It's the smart move. Fuck it! Yeah. Everything I've built! Now some fucking weasel journalist is gonna destroy my reputation! We'll give you a moment. You need to think this through. Can I help you with something? I was hoping to speak with the Reverend. Now's not a good time. Come back later. Okay. I have a lot of responsibility. Sometimes that weighs heavenly on me and I have a moment of weakness, as you can see. It's okay. So what's on your mind? I'm kind of nervous to say this. You don't need to be nervous. I'm listening. Moving to Guyana, it's a big step. Does it scare you? A little. This may surprise you, but I'm scared too. Really? Of course. We're part of a revolution. That brings with it big questions which demand big answers. When we view things through the lens of everyday life, it can feel overwhelming. Yeah. But what we have to remember is that we are a part of something bigger than everyday life. It's bigger than ourselves. Our collective mind can change the world. If we put the work in, we can affect real change. Of course, there's always gonna be those who try to tear us down, but we have to keep fighting. You're a very special member of this family, Sarah. It's no accident that you came to us. God brought you here. We are all destined to be together. Good evening, everyone. Y'all having a good time? Yes. Yes, yes, sir. It's important that we savor the love that we share. Unfortunately, there are many out there who oppose what we have built here. When we're attacked, we turn to our Bibles for the answers. But the truth is this. That Bible holds on like a disease. It holds on because one time you prayed and you got an answer. 
One time you read a scripture and you felt good. You forgot about all those times when you prayed and mom died. You prayed and daddy didn't come home. You prayed and your children didn't get any food. You say, I pray to you, Jim Jones, but you don't help me. No, because you're praying. If you work with me, I will help you. The more energy you give me, the more you believe in me, the more I can do the work. It's the mystery of supply. But most people don't give me much to work with. They sleep. Some of my own people don't care enough to stay awake. I care about you. I want you to be free. I don't want you lost at that final day when you pray and realize that it won't do you any good mm -hmm. because the kingdom of heaven is within. Mm -hmm. The word is inside of you. The only Christ you're going to see is the Christ in you. That's your hope of glory. Mm -hmm. And if you don't grab hold of it, then the man is just going to come and take us all away. So now, our time has come. As we face attacks on our way of life by those who daren't walk within our walls, we can no longer look to the scriptures for answers. Mm. We need to start a revolution, and only our actions can make that happen. Those drinks in your hands, that sweet liquid in your belly, it's laced with cyanide. I speak the truth. In 30 minutes, you're going to cross over into another plane of existence. This will be our revolutionary act, a clear message to those who would persecute us that we would sooner die than be divided and imprisoned by their expectations. Now you get an answer to that age-old question. When the time comes, when your number's up, will you be able to face the Lord with love in your heart? Will you open your arms and embrace the ascension? Or are you going to spread panic and bitterness? Are you going to cling to a world that no longer welcomes you? Now is the time, the time for you to find out who you really are and how you really feel about each other. Feel the unity. Take comfort in one another. Your body is just a vessel. Your soul will live on. You have nothing to fear. This is the revolution, right here, right now. The world will hear our message and it will change everything. Okay, take a breath. Listen to the words I speak. Your drinks do not contain cyanide. This has been a test. You're not gonna die today. Tomorrow, the sunrise will be more beautiful than any you've seen before. Your breakfast will be sweeter than any meal you've ever tasted. The love you have for one another will be stronger than ever because now, now you know. You know that you are prepared to die for each other, to find peace in death.
So, what can you tell me about life here in Jonestown? Oh, it's absolutely amazing. The Lord has gifted us with this community full of love and compassion. <laughs> compassion. Yeah, the sense of unity here is unmatched anywhere else on the planet. You know, we have something here that we wouldn't have been able to have in America. You're getting everything you need here? Food, health care? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we're getting everything that we could possibly need here. In fact, since we've been here, several babies have been born. You know, they'll grow up knowing what a loving community really is. Hey. Who are those people? That's the congressman and his assistant. What are they doing here? There's been some media coverage back in the States. They're here to check on our welfare. It's stupid. We're happy here. Are we? You're not? I didn't say that. It's just some things don't feel right to me. Like what? Megaphone out in the fields. The Reverend Sermons playing all day. Lots of us find that inspiring. Do you find the apocalyptic stuff that he's preaching inspiring? I find it frightening. He's just trying to prepare us for the fight. No revolution ever succeeded without a battle. Don't you have any doubts? I'm happy here. I thought you were too. A lot of things here make me happy. I love being with you and the others. Strange things going on though. Do you know there are armed men at the perimeter every day? We need to be protected. There are people out there who hate what we've built here. What if they're not here to keep people out? What if they're here to keep people in? Okay. Well, thanks very much for speaking with us. Of course. Of course. Thank you. Please, guys, feel free to speak to anyone here. You know, we all love it. This is truly a wonderful place. I'm sure it is. Thank you. Another happy camper. Hmm. Something wrong? Have you noticed? What? Don't turn around too quickly. Just glance. The two men standing over there by the pavilion. People keep glancing to them when they're talking to us, as if seeking approval. You think they're armed? Well, the man who drove us here was. Some members claim they were persecuted back in San Francisco. I, I guess everyone's becoming rather paranoid. What do you want to do next? Let's go speak to some more people. Hmm? Hi. Uh, hi. I'm Annette. <laughs> do you have a moment to speak with the congressman? What about? The commune. How do you find living here? I love it. Uh, it's everything I could possibly want. What is it about this place that you love? The uh, sense of unity, the sense of community, the love here, it's really something. I gotta go, um, I've got some work to do, but it was really nice to meet you both. Thank you for speaking with us. No problem. I have to talk to you, no camera. Sure, uh, take five days, get a drink or something. Hey, slow down. You're going to give me a heart attack. That girl. Give me this. What does it say? Oh, God. That was handed to us. 
by someone who lives here. I can't be responsible for everyone's happiness. They all have to be responsible for their own. I understand that. But why do you think someone would feel they needed help? Who knows? All I know is one bad apple does not make for a rotten barrel. But it's not just one, Reverend. We spoke to others. We showed them the note. When they saw someone of broken rank, they also indicated they were unhappy. We have a few people out there that would like to leave. <sighs> people play games, friend. They play games and they lie. Are you suggesting that the people who want to leave are lying about the abuses here? People are unhappy and they play games. I can't be responsible for that. But just go. Leave us in peace. So, if we take those who are unhappy back with us, back to America, you don't object. If they want to go, then they can go. You're really leaving? Quite a few people are. Why don't you come with us? This is my home. Your home is back in San Francisco. Not anymore. He really has a hold on you, doesn't he? I still believe in the message. What message is that? Love. It was about love in the beginning. Now it's all about fear. There's many guns as people here these days. Things have really changed. Sorry you feel that way. Why can't you see it? See what? The Reverend is a paranoid mess. He's leading us all down a dark path. All I know is I've seen the Reverend perform miracles year after year. He's healed the blind, helped the crippled walk. He's clearly been chosen by God. Who are we to question the anointed? You. Well done on the election, sir. That's the second. Congressman! Okay, great news. Congressman! Congressman, take me with you. Please. You want to leave? I haven't had the courage to say anything, but I feel like I finally can. You seem pretty committed to Jim Jones just an hour ago. Hey, I'm one of his highest deputies. If I hadn't helped him keep people in line, he would have hurt me. But the Reverend has lost his way, and I can't be held responsible for what happens here anymore. I just want to be my own man. He's lying. Yeah, he's still loyal to Jones. Guys, I've done things to hurt you, and I've made mistakes, but I just want to be free like the rest of you. No, I Bullshit! All right, all right. Let's everybody stay calm here. Now, if you're sincere about your desire to leave this place, then what I can do I is I... swear to God, I'm telling the truth. I just want to leave. Okay. Then you can come with us. Come on. Listen, I just, I, I don't know why you would turn. You know it's lying, you know it's fake. The congressman said. Our plane, where is it? Uh, I'm told fuel was low. The pilot's gone to a base the other side of Georgetown to fill up. And how long are we expected to wait for this plane? Well, I've been given an ETA of 5 p.m., only half an hour away. Uh, there's a waiting room uh, over in the main building. I suggest we wait in there. Fine. I don't know. Where's Snyder? Oh, Christ.
please. We can settle this with a simple discussion. It doesn't have to be like this. It's too late for that. It's far, far harder to have walked through every day, die slowly, and from the time you're a child till the time you get gray, you're dying. This is a revolutionary suicide. This is not a self-destructive suicide. So they'll pay for this. They brought this upon us, and they'll pay for that. I leave that destiny to them. 1,000 people who said, we don't like the way the world is. Take our life from us. We laid it down. We got tired. We didn't commit suicide. We committed an act of revolutionary suicide, protesting the conditions of an inhumane world. And he took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it. He gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take it, my love child. Only by tasting the body of Christ will you find your answers. In the same way, he took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you.
I'm so sorry, the door was open. Oh no, that's okay. I, I was just taking a walk. My name's Gaia. Yeah, I'm really sorry to bother you. Wait. I can see you're tired. You're welcome to rest here. I didn't expect to meet an American out here. I came to Guyana four years ago. My husband worked here. He passed away. I'm so sorry. I grieved for such a long time, constantly reliving the same moments day after day. Then something happened. I moved beyond all that. I woke up. What happened? It takes effort to be effortless. And sometimes you have to go through the pain for it to become painless. The process can be frustrating. I was part of the People's Temple. We were a church commune who lived nearby back in the 70s. Jonestown. A very sad thing. I survived it, but it's haunted me ever since. I came back out here hoping to deal with my feelings about what happened. I'm so conflicted because I want to connect to something spiritual, something beyond everyday existence. But to connect to that should make you feel free, not imprisoned. That's how I felt within the church. I thought it would open my mind and my heart, but all they did was close them off. You know, religion doesn't have a monopoly on spirituality. And your feelings aren't subjugated by not knowing. We are all connected. You just don't see it yet. Sometimes it takes an event so incredible to wake us up, for better or worse, and you don't get to choose. constantly amazed every time I walk through here. It's so beautiful. Nothing is more perfect than this moment. Don't you agree? Wake up, Sarah. I am awake. Oh, there, pick those. They're good for bug bites. Just a few, save some for next time. Each expression of life on this planet has its own unique vibration. Connection to every living thing is available to us if we're willing to be open to it. I want to be open to it, but I just feel so disconnected. You're still a willing partner in this dance of life whether you acknowledge it or not. I have moments where I feel connected, but I can't sustain it. It feels like there's resistance. Start with the body and the mind will follow. We've all had trauma in our lives. It doesn't lessen what you've been through just that you're not defined by your past, good or not so good. It's human to feel emotions, but people think they are their emotions, when it's really just one small part of us, yet we let those emotions control our lives. So how do we break free of those emotions? First, acknowledge that you can feel. Let yourself feel. But then remember that you're not your thoughts, nor your emotions. Sounds so simple. It's never simple to undo decades of damaging thoughts. It takes a great deal of belief. I did believe in something. Look where that got me. But have you ever believed in yourself? Believed in Sarah? 
I know it's hard for you to believe me, but when a person allows their emotional state to overcloud their judgment, it makes it difficult to really see. Yeah, I'm saying my emotional state is in great shape right now. Have you tried meditation? Kind of. I found it hard to quiet my mind. The negative thoughts just kept coming. What's this? If you can't change your thinking on your own, this will help. What is it? It's an ancient mixture I learned to make from the locals here. Very powerful. It induces a state of relaxation and centeredness. Drink this and we'll meditate together. This and the meditation will allow your mind to expand. You'll see reality for the way it really is. I'm not sure I want to drink it. What are you afraid of? Being out of control, I guess. How has your life been being in control? Not so good. Maybe it's time to surrender. Close your eyes. Begin by becoming aware of your breathing and allow your awareness to draw down into your body, inhaling and exhaling. As you inhale, allow the breath to enter the nostrils cooling the nasal passages as it goes and touches the back of your throat and draws down deep into the bottom of your lungs. The breath is your guide. The breath is your refuge. As thoughts arise, which they will, Gently bring your attention back to your breath, inhaling and exhaling, deeper and deeper. of our land and they've taken us and driven us and we try to find ourselves. We try to find a new beginning, but it's too late. You can't separate yourself from your brother and your sister. No way I'm going to do it. I, I refuse. I don't know who fired the shot. I don't know who killed the conference. It's done. Good. You have the documents? And a box over there. Okay. No way for us to die. We must die with some dignity. Mother, 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 please.
Mrs. Snyder, Operation MK Guyana is now terminated officially. Send in a crew. I'll be on the next flight. in that drink? Water. What? It was just water. No, but I saw. Yes. You saw. You wanted to awaken and see the world for what it really is. You didn't think you could do it on your own, but you did. You are powerful. You just proved it. There was nothing in that vial but water. But I saw something. A past incident that I wasn't present at. How could I have seen that? When your third eye is opened, you're capable of seeing everything. What the hell is going on? I asked myself the same question. The agency assigned me to watch you. Make sure the memories stayed repressed. I thought it would be an easy gig, just ushering you through a few years of medication and counseling and then passing you off onto the next one in line for this shit detail. But then you came off the meds. And psychiatry wasn't enough anymore. Now, here we are. What the hell are you talking about? What agency? That's irrelevant. What's important is that I have fucked up and I'm gonna have to rectify that. You think you can just kill me in cold blood and get away with it? Think it. No, I know it. I've handled far tougher marks than you. This is as straightforward as it gets. Mentally ill girl, racked with survivor's guilt, comes back to the site of the massacre and commits suicide. The headline writes itself. Come to me, my love child. You belong with us. You've taken up space in my head for over a decade now. Consider this your eviction notice. I'm taking back my power. I will no longer live in fear.
The battle is on for your heart and your mind. So don't give them over so readily. Don't buy into the phony political races. Turn off the manufactured news. Reject all of the fear-mongering. Go outside. Connect with nature. Find love. Feel gratitude. Choose a life where you don't live in fear. Fear is the prison they want you to live in. But what is there to fear? Nothing. We are all one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively. Death doesn't actually exist. Our lives are all a dream. And each of us is the imagination of ourselves. But remember, imagination is evidence of the divine. Let it out today. 